Let's see what I'm in for this week. Hi, we're we the Duan Han family. I'm Forrest. I'm Angela. We, we have, have five, five kids. kids. Christopher, who's nine. Don't you dare, Christopher. Isabella, who's eight years old. Set of twin boys, Lawrence and Benjamin, who are six. And little Charlotte, who's just turned five. Ah! The dynamics between the three boys is just constant fighting, just very tense. Now that's bullying. Did you see that? Go to the car. The toughest time with the children is right after school. They go to Chinese school. They have soccer, golf, tennis. They also have art class. The older two have private piano lessons. Christopher also has another writer's workshop. There's a lot of pressure in getting them to the next place on time. I'm constantly on the road driving them around. Here's the plan, kids. When we get home, you wash your hands and do your homework. And I'm going to make dinner. And then I'll put your dinner in containers, and we can eat on our way to go pick up brother. OK, guys, go get in the car. We're going to eat. So do these kids live in the house or the van? So many kids, so little time, so many things to do. I end up having to yell and scream before they'll actually listen. Lauren, stop it. I mean it. Stop it. I mean it. You don't hit your mother. Stop it. Mom looks stressed. Forrest and I are both dentists, and we own four offices. My working schedule is from Monday through Saturday, and I wish I'd have more time to spend with the kids to watch them grow. Hello! Hi, honey. Hi, Charlotte! Because of his work and the other projects that he's doing, he is really hardly ever home. OK, honey, I'm going to go upstairs. As soon as Forrest finishes dinner, He'll be like, OK, I'm done. See you guys, kid. And then just walk into the computer room and finds himself with things to do up there. We built a house three years ago, and we haven't moved in because Forrest is afraid that the children will tear up the new house, like how they've torn up this house. <laughs> There's really something wrong here. I'm always mad at them, and I look at their little faces. They're mad at one another. I need a miracle. <laughs> Super, Super nanny, nanny, we need your help. Come now. Five children, overscheduled and stressed. Yes, you do need my help, and I'm on my way. Hi, Joe. Hello. Welcome. Hi. Come on Hi. in. Hi. Nice Welcome. to meet you. Welcome. Nice to Joe. meet you. Thank you. Pleased nice to meet you. Forest. Forest. Hi. Nice to meet you. Forest. When I first arrived, I met Angela and Forrest. You have a beautiful teeth. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> That's the first thing I noticed. A smile. Yeah, beautiful smile. There you go. Thank you. So you're going to be on your way then, huh? Yes. Okay. Bye. Bye. And Forrest was on his way to work. Mum then informed me that we were all going to pick up the kids. And so I got in the back of the car and decided that I would meet the children on their way home from school. She was a little bit worried, to say the least. Here we go. We pull up by the school, and I wait patiently in the car. Mom, she does it. Alert, close your eyes. Mum asked them to put their seatbelts on and to turn around, and nobody listened. Benjamin, sit down. Lauren, sit down. down sit, turn around. You know what, Charlotte, sit down. Put down the seatbelt, please. Don't exit that way. So I sat there patiently, watching them all. Sit down. Hey, you sit down first. And then they really started to mess around. Ah! You're the liar. You're not. Lawrence, if you're not going to buckle, you're getting out of the car. I told you. Hey. The car is fun because I can do everything I want. With that, Mum tries to distract them with a box of pears. Mum, oh, pears! Mommy! Don't grab it from your sister. But Lawrence, give it back. Don't 
do that? In which they start throwing the pears at one another. Ah! And I realised this woman had no control. Ah! You know what? We need to go. Would you guys buckle up so we can leave? It's 15 minutes and we're still stationary. Ah! Ah! Christopher, stop it! And then she starts to shout at the kids and tell them to behave themselves, and they end up laughing. Stop! <laughs> <laughs> when you've got your child at school all day and then having to race from one activity to the next, it becomes very tiresome day in and day out. Christopher is nine. After school activities, a week. Golf, soccer, maths, Chinese class, piano and Club Scouts. That's 16 additional hours on top of school plus homework. That's so much. Honey, it's not this oh, backpack. Yeah. It's the other backpack. Going from activity to activity is uh, quite stressful. I didn't say it. Stop looking at me. And then I see Christopher arguing with Isabella, and he spits straight into her face. Christopher, don't spit on your sister. She just broke down in humiliation, so upset at his behaviour. And Christopher really didn't have any remorse. Then so why did you spit on me? Because I kept my hands to myself. Christopher, it that's... so cute! No, it doesn't. <laughs> Isabella, just ignore him. And yet Mum did nothing. Mum just continued to drive the car. Stop! Yes. I was just wondering, you spend so much time looking in your rear mirror, but how much time do you spend looking forward and driving? Do you feel safe? I feel safe. Really? Thank you. Yes. Because right now I don't. Get it off. Yeah. I saw the kids in the car behaving the way they were. And so I wasn't surprised when we got back to the house because their behaviour just got worse. And Mum did nothing about it. Nothing. I don't think that Forrest really knows how hard it is for me because he has gone to work most of the day. Just rinse it off. Stay right here and rinse it off. You're feeling frustrated? Yeah, You're feeling... I'm angry. Angry? I'm feeling... Helpless. There's something very important from this piece of paper that's missing. So what kind of happens now? It's like 9 o'clock and what would they do? Finish the homework? Finish the homework and I get them to bed. And then you get to bed. Right. Right. So no real kind of schedule, it just finish the homework and then... Ideally, I like them to go to bed right about now, 9 o'clock. 8.30, 9 o'clock. That would be ideal, but we always seem to run late, and so right. it probably gets really done about 10 o'clock. Right. I think we can say that Americans are extremely enthusiastic in making sure that their kids do far too many activities. The reason these kids are up so late from finishing their homework is because they don't get home to at least 8 p.m. from all their other activities. That's way too late. What do you do when you're not doing your homework? I don't know. play. Do you get much time to do that? No. No? Why is that? My mom gives me too much stuff to do. She gives you too much to do? I'm always worried that the next day when the homework is due, but I can't finish it because I have other activities, that the teacher might get really mad at me. So do you get to do what your friends do? Do you get to hang out and have play dates as well? Uh, only sometimes, not often. Seeing the kids so stressed out with so much work that they had to do after doing a day at school was a real concern for me because I could see the impact it was having on the kids with the temper tantrums, the attitude, the, the tiredness, the crying. There's no room to breathe. I wish Dad didn't work so much. So eventually Dad comes home and Dad becomes the human jungle gym and it's nearly time for bed. 
A lot of times that's pushing us late, finishing homework and finishing all the work that they need to do before they can go to bed. Go finish your homework. I'm not going to pull you. Go finish your homework. The kids have so much activities. So when they came home, they still have to deal with a lot of homework. Then it create a lot of uh, emotion, a lot of temper. The kids are not listening. Who disciplines them when it's the pair of you? But you don't discipline, you do then? I really usually do. What do you make of what she's just said? I don't see them that much. Yeah. I only see them like a half hour or yeah. an hour each day. Yeah. So I think uh, they might have some excuse to be a little bit wild. He told me how he doesn't have the time. And time is something that you have to carve in. And I don't really feel that Forrest understands that. OK, honey, I'm going to go still do my, do my people work. OK. Because you said you wouldn't, you did it. It's 10 o'clock, already an hour past their bedtime, and they still haven't even finished their homework yet. It's going to be a late night for this family, so I'm heading out now. So, guys, I'll see you all tomorrow, OK? See you all. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night, Good night. Good night Angela. Thank you very much, Forrest. See you tomorrow. Ah! Having spent a day with this family, Mum's stressed out, the kids are stressed out, there's no discipline, Dad works too long a day, and their schedule is ridiculous, absolutely ridiculous. And these guys need some structure and a good framework, and I can't wait to actually get talking to them and straighten this out. The first thing that I do want to discuss is the behaviour is out of control in this house, completely out of control. They won't listen, they smart mouth, they have attitude. They hit, they punch, they do what they want. All of that's got to stop. Travelling in the car yesterday was the journey to hell and back. Christopher spat in Isabella's face yesterday and it turned my stomach. <laughs> there is no discipline. There's no technique in place that follows through the lessons to be learned. You act like this, this is the consequence. Because that is your job as a parent, and you're not doing it right now. We already know, Forrest, that you've said it's because it's the last thing you want to do when you get home from work, right? Is discipline mm -hmm. the kids. You work very hard, you run your practices, supporting the family financially. What are you giving emotionally? I try to show them as much love as I can, and I try to put in as much time as possible as soon as I get home. Those kids don't get that time from you. They get half an hour if they're lucky. How much time do you spend sitting down with them? How much time do you spend up in the office? When actually, office should be finished. And now it's about you being home. I just need to cut back my working schedule. I think that's the only thing I can. And that's what's important here. Priorities for us, right? Angela, why is it so important for you as a mother to have your children do so many activities in one week? Each child only has a few activities. Christopher has nine. OK. And Isabella has seven. We both would like them to be um, exposed to extracurricular as well as sports. It is good that you are exposing them to the opportunities that the world has to offer for them. But you've been unrealistic with your expectations. The kids are getting stressed out. We didn't realize that uh, we're putting the pressure on the kids. We, we thought we were doing a, a favor, make sure they're totally occupied. Making sure they're occupied so that we don't have to do what's expected of us as parents. You've used the classes as substitute. But let's talk about the new house, not the one we're in now. 
to work so hard and to not move in to your dream home for three years is ludicrous. I think it's kind of crazy, yeah. But I, I really feel the reason behind that is because of how things are at home. I'm asking you to admit things about yourself right now that you need to change. So I'm here to help you and support you guys in doing that if you are ready for it. I'm ready. Definitely. Right, let's go and start some work. I think it's absolute madness that these parents are afraid to move because of their children's behaviour. So this morning, I've got a big surprise for them. Good. Are you ready for some news? Yeah. Yes. This is what we are doing right now. We are going to move into the new house. Yeah. All right, good. Yeah. Fresh change, new house. You're going to fear the fear and do it anyway. I know that, you know, we do have to move. It just seems like it's such a huge task. Um, I'm just dreading it. So what I have brought to you all are these. These are get-go bags, all right? And this one's got Benjamin's name on it. You all have one. What I want you to do is to put your special things into this bag so that tonight, when you're sleeping there, OK, at least you have the familiar things around you that are special to you until all the rest of the boxes get unpacked. Moving home is one of the most stressful things a family can do. The get-go bag is a fantastic idea in allowing them to feel a part of the process. I know that Angela and Forrest are afraid to move, but this is their chance to put structure into their new home. Charlotte, somebody help Charlotte. She's struggling. I'm glad to move in a new house. I feel like dancing. <laughs> OK, you go over there and put tuck it in more. I'm really excited to move into our new house because we have a larger space. OK, let's go over to the house rules. The children are very excited about moving into the new house. They don't know that we're going to have new rules and new expectations. I think that the kids are going to be in a bit of a shock. This here says house rules. This is what we are all going to follow in Did this you house. Make that? house. In our new house, this is what Did you every... Make that? Lawrence? Lawrence, come here. Does it make sense Dad, when you say yes, bring the children over, please. Words. I'd like you all to look at me, please, because I'm going to say something. Mum and Dad are talking to you about the house rules. I'd like you to listen, stay in one place, and do as you're told, OK? This is your warning. If you choose to not to listen to what I am saying right now, then I am putting you straight into discipline. All right, stand up, all of you, please. Now. We are going through the house rules. How about you, you Seth? Our home. You don't have to respect the exterior. We have to respect every corner of this house. Oh, even this corner? Oh. OK, how is Christopher going to listen to you? Christopher, listen here. When I'm, when Ask him to look at you, OK? Look at Daddy while I'm talking to you. <laughs> That's not right, Christopher. Why? That's not right. When dad, mom talk to you, you I'm don't listen this at way. You. Let me is he give being you disrespectful. Is he being disrespectful to look yes. at you like that? All right. <laughs> to look at your father like that and to pull that face is being disrespectful. I'd like you to look at me, please. You're going to end up sitting on the reflection chair and being disciplined. Christopher still showed attitude even after a warning, so now it was time for discipline. Come down, please. I'd like you to explain to Christopher why he's in this reflection chair. What is it that he didn't do? We want you to be a good kid. We want you to grow up properly, be a useful person to the, for the society. That is, that's definitely great stuff, but for now, he needs to know 
What, why, why are you here? here? You stay here for friend. nine minutes. You're here because you didn't listen to me. There's your book in there. I'd like you to write down why and the effects of it, please. You know better. The children do one minute per their age in the reflection chair, writing about what they did wrong. After the reflection chair, the children go to the communication couch to talk about what they wrote. OK, when Jojo tell you, when Jojo's talking and tell you to do something, you're not listening, you do your own things. Do you think it's the right thing to do? No. OK, is that the same thing you want people to do to you when you're talking? Do you want to see that happen? What do you think now? And what are you going to do in the future, Christopher? Mm, I'm going to listen to Jojo and do what she says and what, do what you and Mom says. And again, let's hug. Uh, yay! <laughs> I'm done. Well done. Thank you. That was a fantastic analogy. Thank you. And you sat down and you explained and you asked him to look at you when you were talking. That was fantastic. Thank you. Wonderful communication couch. Wonderful. Wonderful. With the rules and discipline firmly in place in the new home, it's now time to tackle the schedule. This mum, she's so overstressed and overscheduled that she doesn't even realise that her kids have over 40 activities a week. That's the next thing I want to address. You see that big mountain over there? I tell you what we're going to do. We're going to see if we can hold what we do during the week. So, Mum and Dad, I want you to take what you see here and whoever it belongs to, you have to give it to the child <laughs> and you have to try and hold it, OK? <laughs> Ready? Let's go, Mum and Dad. When Joe had the kids get all piled up with their activities, and I looked at these poor kids, and I said to myself, what parent am I <laughs> overloading the kids with so many things to do? This exercise was to set up exactly how many mm -hmm. classes you put your kids through <laughs> every week. Can I ask you a question? Do we need to change the activities? Yes! OK, let's drop the stuff then. Oh. <laughs> So the next thing I wanted to do was to come up with a new manageable schedule. We are going to strip some of those activities to create a new routine, a schedule that allows some fun time, some downtime, some family time, some rest, no stress. OK? OK. But there will be some that you will have to keep and they'll be important that you do keep and Mum and Dad will explain why. OK, I'd like to ask you both to decide which are the mandatory ones, the ones that they must do? I think in Chinese, you should keep right. the Chinese school. Oh, they should man. keep. Oh, OK. Oh. I hate Chinese school. We are going to keep Chinese because it is part of who we are. I know, I keep. One day, they'll thank you for it. One day. They really want their kids to go to Chinese school so that they can learn Chinese language and culture and be in touch with their Chinese heritage. So now it's time for the kids to choose a few activities for themselves. Isabella, what are the lessons that you want to keep? Ballet. You like ballet? What would you like to take up? Yeah, I like drum. You want to do drum? <laughs> you guys doing Cub Scouts? Yeah, I'm doing Cub Scouts and skating. Even though the schedule is going to make everybody's life more manageable, Mum's still struggling. One thing we haven't discussed is the tutoring, the language art tutor which I think is important. It's all too much work on top of eight hours of schoolwork. For him, his, his, his English is pretty advanced, but when it comes to individual writing, nice sentences, descriptive paragraphs, he's not doing it. I know, but he's nine years old. He's not even in middle school yet. He needs some breathing space. As much as you're torn sitting there thinking, I need him to do this, I need him to do that. If, if we go ahead with that, we're going to be back to square one again. It was a bit hard to give up a lot of these great activities, but we're both willing to give it a try. You know, it is going to create 
more harmony, not so much stress for all of you. And you know, you're, it's not something that you're actually going to see in four weeks or five weeks. You're going to see that straight away. And you're allowing space for you to spend time with the children so they can be around their mother so that you can enjoy motherhood. <laughs> you know, enjoy it because you wasn't enjoying it. Mm -hmm. With the activity sorted out, the family's going to be spending much less time on the road. But the kids still need to behave with the time that they do spend in the car. So I introduced Mum to the car drill. Yeah. Why do we need to do this? You need to do this because your behaviour has been incredibly naughty and very unsafe in the car when Mum's been driving you to your lessons. So bad that you are very lucky that there has not been a car accident. So with good behaviour and you listening to the car drill, it means that we'll be able to have safe journeys to wherever we're going, OK? We're going to do one at a time. Number one, where the kids sit, OK? I'd like you to give direction to the children where they're to sit. Lawrence, I want you to sit in the seat behind Mummy. The main goal of the car drill is to make sure that Mum's in control of the journey from start to finish. And you establish this by going over the routine over and over again. Once that's done, the children will know what's expected of them and they'll start to behave better. Number two, take one game or toy with you, OK? Parents should always make sure that they've got something to keep their kids entertained when they're in the car, full stop. OK, number three is seat belts on and no standing up. So, back in the car, we're going to do one, two and three. Right, the next one is going to be for you, OK? You're going to lay down the expectations of behaviour once you're in the car. All of the house rules apply in the car as we are at home. Can somebody else have any suggestions? No, you have to suggest. They're your rules. You're driving. There's no suggestions coming from them. It's all coming from you. You need to make sure that you take your five kids to where they need to go safe. They do as they're told. Do you remember how manic it was? Mm -hmm. Do you remember how unsafe I felt? Mm -hmm. The idea is that setting rules will help the parents regain control. But, of course, these parents have got to step up as well. You're only in control if you behave like you're in control. The last one is for you, Mum, OK? Stop the car if you are losing control. So if these kids are kicking off in the back and you need to give a warning, you're going to stop the car and you're going to turn around and look at whoever needs a warning, okay. all right? So that they know, OK? OK. Listen, have fun whilst Jojo's away for a few days, OK? I want you guys to implement everything that we've learned. Make sure that we are following the routine that we have down. Take care and I'll see you when I get back. Now it's in their hands. Whether they step up and take control, it's down to them. After a few days without me, I'm really excited to see how well they've done with the kids. I hope that the new home has given them the fresh start that they've been waiting for. Are we ready to take a look? Yes. Right, OK. I think what we should do is we, we should... We should do five of them. We should make this really, really thick dough. I think it's not <laughs> too wet now. We should probably put more flour in it. There's some more flour at the bottom. Oh, not the much. whole... Whoa! Ah. Look at it, it's erupting. Ah. Okay, no, the okay, chocolate milk. Baking soda and vinegar. Yeah. That's fantastic. The kids had fun. They were able just to come together as siblings and hang out with you guys. It's a lot of fun. I haven't done this for a long time, quite a long time. Right, so you felt very rewarded yourself. Yes. Made it all worth it. I feel like have a family life back. There's a, a massive difference in the children's behaviour. We've seen a dramatic improvement with Christopher's behaviour because the activities have been taken out of the schedule, which has created a lot more contentment. And yet, let's not forget about the major, major reasons that brought this all together. And that is because we are now in a new environment as well. We are now in the home that we wanted to be in. You can just see, you know, how much more relaxed the kids are for it and you both as well. And it's really made a difference. You'd be very proud. Lawrence, next time I do not need your help. Christopher, 
when people have an intention coming to help you, you don't talk to them that way. You tell them nicely, they say, well, Lawrence, I can handle it. It's OK. Hey, hey, buddy, you need to take a deep breath. What did you say? If her eye is at the front of her eye, this eye is not at the front don't of her eye. Don't point at her mom. a little bit this way. No, we're not joking. Christopher, you need to go into the reflection chair. OK. Go. OK. Maybe more consistent. You talk to him, it's fine. I don't mind to do it. But if you. Lawrence need reading. OK, I go upstairs and you talk to him. Love it. You're both working together here. You're both coming from the same place, and Christopher is able to see that in full force, which is a major step for the pair of you. So well done to the pair of you. I'm very proud. I'm just reminding you about and what we do when we get into the car. Trunk. Benjamin. Now we have gotten into the car. What do we do next? You can read this book, or you can wait until your sister is finished. Which one would you rather have? OK, I'm liking this. <laughs> you've kept nice and cool here. There was some praise in the beginning, and you've given the children choice, which is lovely. Christopher, was she grabbing the book away from you? Yes. OK, That's Charlotte. Warning. That's a warning for you, Charlotte. You need to ask nicely. OK, good to see, good to see. Straight away, you nipped it in the bud, and you're given a warning. What can I say? Fantastic. Well done. Let's move on to the next bit. You're in the reflection chair right now <laughs> because you were yelling at your brothers, sisters. No, I'm talking to you. All right, I want you to sit here and think about what it is that you did and how it affected other people. You're going to write it down. OK, I need to question here because he's in the chair and you're talking to him, which is not part of the discipline. Don't because be talking with him in the reflection chair. Correct. If you ignore what he's saying, then he realises your word's final. As soon as you start to talk back, you show him you don't have that control. It's a power and control thing with you and Christopher, power and control. OK, so this is our last clip. I want my hot dog from yesterday. You don't have to push my backpack. I'm already done. Why does Isabel only have to play once? <laughs> Oh dear, let's just stop it for a moment. So enough to drive anyone bonkers. He has learnt to communicate through whining. And he needs to be set a very good example of how to be able to use his normal voice to communicate. So how would you show him the example? What does Christopher sound like when he whines? Mom, I want a sandwich. I said a million times. <laughs> exactly. <that> right? <laughs> exactly. As soon as they see a grown adult behaving how they do, it becomes a comedy show. But it allows us to set the example and show them exactly how they sound. And then for you guys to only accept what he's saying when he does change his voice. So having seen all of these clips, today what I would like to do is to work with a pair of you and just really tweak everything. So are we ready to get going? Mm -hmm. Brilliant, OK, so let's go. So it's my last day with the Dwar arms, but there's still a few things that I need to change. First, Mum's still having problems with Christopher in the reflection chair. Christopher. Mum, I want to know what time it is. There was a lot of communication happening on the chair rather than the communication happening on the couch. Mum was really feeding in to this back talk from Christopher. At 54, he's finished. So what time is it? And they really struggle the pair of them with this power and control. Let's go to the communication couch and talk about what you wrote down. Today I said rude things to my mom, so she sent me to my reflection chair. So what was the last part of that, Christopher? What did you, you write down? That yeah, made other people feel frustrated and angry when I had that behavior. Mm. I'm, I'm curious to know why. Why don't you actually want your mother to feel frustrated or angry with you? Because it makes her mad. Oh, no. Your anger is now making people frustrated and mad. So I am pleased to see, because it shows me, that you are fully aware. This communication couch is incredibly important for the pair of you. 
These are the conversations on this couch that allow our children to ask questions and for us to answer honestly. It allows room for our children to realise that we're not unfair, we're just doing what we feel is right as parents that we must do. Good? Yes. I'm very impressed with the progress this family have made. However, just before I leave, there's one little thing I need to fix. What I want you guys all to really think hard about is the way that we speak to one another. This is what Jojo hears all the time. I want a drink. I want my bag. I think that my kids uh, sometimes do wine to get attention. I mean, isn't that what you hear? What do you hear, Forrest, from your children? What do they say? Mom, I want to drink <laughs> It's easy for a child to adopt that whining tone when they are emotionally feeling upset or, or feel that there's an injustice going on. But then what happens very easily is that the child starts to adopt that as their normal voice. Now, is that talking properly or is that whining? Yeah, whining. So let's think about how we talk to one another. And if you sound like this, then what mum and dad are going to say to you, OK, use your normal voice. The kids laughed and we laughed ourselves. So we realise it's unacceptable behaviour. So can I get a big group hug before I leave? A big group hug! <laughs> Thank you, Joe. Thank you so much for helping us to make the whole family happier, have a more smiling on each buddy's face. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Listen, keep up the work. You know, you've seen what a difference that you've made already and just keep going with it. Look at this little one, look. She's passed out. She's fast asleep. <coughs> Angela. Thank you. Take care, you're welcome. Mm. Oh, <laughs> take care of yourself, OK? And just keep, keep it up, keep it up. I would like to thank Joe for coming to our house to help with all of us. Bye! Bye! Bye. Bye, Christopher. Oh, bye, Benjamin. Bye, Fulco. Have fun in your new classes, all right? Enjoy okay. them. What? Enjoy them. Bye-bye. I'll miss you, Jojo. Bye. Bye, bye darling. Bye-bye. Take care. Stay tuned. Dinner time. Well, Mom, serve your rice. What do you say? Thank you, Mom. Thank you, Mom. Forrest and I are together on the same page when it comes to parenting the children, that there's a lot more communication. We're definitely glad that we did move and everything else is behind us. Wow. Christopher, you have a good appetite. Haven't eaten a so delicious thing in a long time. Since Joe came in, the kiss has been changed quite a bit, especially Christopher. Grandma, you know what? Christopher was not in the reflection chair at all today. Wonderful. His temper is getting much better. Angela and I, we can see the change. I think giving up those activities has been worthwhile because the children are a lot happier and we're having time that we can spend together. These are the things that we've actually never done before. So it's a great experience. I like Jojo. I'm with you, Jojo. I think Jojo is cool because she really helps our family to make a difference. This family wanted the help. They were willing to really motivate themselves in, to make those changes. So I walk away a, a happy nanny. Thank you so much for helping us to make the whole family happier, have a more smiling on each buddy's face.